Okay. Good morning, everybody. Thank you guys for hanging in there while we, well, I don't know, let's be honest. While I get to my office, it's hard having kids and being on time. It's just as what it is. Um, so thank you guys for that. And I am so excited. Jim Boy has a camera. We can see his lovely face today. It's going to get real now. Oh, look out. So we are back for NFR Hangover round five. And round five did not disappoint. Well, listen, I'm sure that round five did disappoint for some people. That was, we will talk about that. But um, it was a great show. And as usual, I'm going to start off uh, talking about a little bit of the production end of it. The opening, man, I hope the PRCA is paying attention. I think that everyone is enjoying the openings, the stories that we're telling. And I would also add as a more sentimental side of it, um, in this year where everyone has had their own struggles, to be able to kind of all come around and see positivity and something, I, I don't know, I just think that they're really speaking to a much larger audience this year than I think than normally they would be. So I'm super, super excited about the openings. Um, and I mean, so many other things, but Jim boy, what do you have for us today? How's it, how's it seem to you, Emily? I bet that's pretty cool that you actually get to kind of see the opening because last year you didn't get to see any of that. No, that's literally, we were talking about that in the back last night, Haley and I were waiting for the grand entry to go. And, and that's why I told her, I said, gosh, I said, it's just amazing to hear, um, you know, just the na national anthem. I mean, we get to see it on a TV uh, mm -hmm. at Vegas in the tent, but it's not even remotely the same. Uh, and so being right there in that atmosphere and, um, you know, the, all the bombs going off and stuff is kind of, kind of wild. I'm really, really thankful that I did not bring Chongo's little sister for the grand entry. I had contemplated that, uh, pretty hard, but fortunately I'm back on Badger, uh, the good, uh, pickup man horse of Matt Twitchell's. And so he's, he's handling it really, really well, but it is kind of, it's different to be in there for all of that. I can imagine that's because I, you know, the openings to me, just even I'm not entered is, is pretty cool. I yeah. Mean, It'll give you chills. So I can imagine a contestant, you know, they talk about coming down the alley your first time coming out, but you know, the discussion might be now your, your first time at the NFR is Dallas and actually getting to see all of that stuff that goes on and then coming in there. And, and I'm sure it's a little different, but just getting to see them openings. I bet that is pretty cool now. Yeah. I feel bad for the guy that you ran over the other night. Um, that was not me. Oh, and we're going on now. <laughs> that was definitely Jacob Edler. That was not me. Do not I, put that on me. <laughs> don't be I, starting any rumors. Yeah, I laughed. <laughs> I didn't see it, but then I saw the replay on Facebook later, and he did mow him down. Like, it was completely Emily and Taco style, like, whack. <laughs> I was really proud of him. I was like, wait, I hit him. Like, you might as well not be good. So. Matt Reeves told me yesterday that Jacob had like 40 friend requests. He's a Facebook hero <laughs> last year that night. He had like 40 new friend requests before the perf was over, you know. You know, between right that and like the back number ceremony where he wasn't able to be there, like whenever they got his back number and he was like, I'm getting my back number. I'm walking on stage. I don't care what they're doing right now. <laughs> I was like, Jacob's just kind of owning this in FR. Right. He's just yeah, he don't he don't Take care stride. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I, uh um you know when i when i was gonna you know talk about you running over the gate guy and, and then uh, on one of them deals on facebook last night uh, or roy doyle commented there a few years ago uh, on one of my posts wasn't that roy that you ran over at colby's college rodeo no it was chris oh yeah okay yeah. so yeah and, and i hit him twice <laughs> Like I got him down the first time and then he got up and turned and like my horse turned around and hit him again. Just made sure we did it right. So anyway, he all the points. Dangerous place. yeah, anytime he sees me coming in on a bay horse, he is like crawling the fence. <laughs> We've gotten to be pretty good friends since. So fortunately it doesn't hold that against me. <laughs> <laughs> okay well i don't know that we actually introduced and, and heidi you didn't plug your sponsors oh you well see i'm all discombobbled this morning so let's do a quick sponsor plug um obviously we definitely want to give a shout out to william howell at garden city community college uh, for hooking us up and getting jim boy's lovely face on 
um, double. Why can't I think think about this? Double rafter livestock. Yeah. Uh, bucking horses and goats. Yeah, and I which, had a question. Somebody texted me. They they uh, they weren't going to be able to join this morning, but they wanted to ask Tom. You know what the key is to keeping bucking horses in the pasture. <laughs> <laughs> where you have to find that key <laughs> maybe keep maybe keep my fence hot i don't know <laughs> and then the next question is who does tom call and i said it doesn't matter neither one of us are going to show up he's <laughs> my hired man <laughs> <laughs> so we also want to give a shout out to cinch are you sporting any cinch clothes today there jim boy uh yeah yeah it's, it's uh oh know. yeah very one nice. Of the, one of the production shirts from Santa Bar. Scored big there. I know oh, my yeah. husband has a handful of them now. Um, <laughs> uh, they actually sent me a mask. Right. Like it or not, at least I can sport that when I have to go. I don't know anywhere. I have my G-string mask. <laughs> um, oh. Good. Good oh. City. Very nice. Logoed and all. All right. So before we go on, let's do. We got our sponsors. Uh, lined out let's talk about introductions real quick so i know you've already mentioned emily we've already yeah, got emily, talked about emily miller beisel on this morning with tom with her dad tom and and you know it, it, this, is a, this is quite an accomplishment for us to get tom on there because this ain't his gig this ain't his kind of deal <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, i guarantee you i don't know how many barrel racers or wannabe barrel racers that tom has saved um you know he's driven miles uh him and margaret i should have margaret on here too but um because i seen margaret was on the way home from Liberty's finals and high school finals last summer and, and i saw margaret at the big nice uh at truck stealing. stop at stealing yeah where was she headed to rapid or where i can't remember uh, i cannot remember but I, I think i made the rapid trips um yeah i think she was going south but her and Rowan, they were headed somewhere. And so, it, you know, when Emily says it takes a village, it, it does. But I, got, I promise you, uh, folks, and, and most people around here know that, that Tom has uh, saved many a people. And there's times I'll be working on my trailer at the house and, and I'll call him like, dude, I, you know, I'm, I'm working on my jack. I can't even get my, and he goes, well, you're missing this little bitty part. And I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? Come on. And, and it goes in that gear and and he goes, there's a little monkey running around that has a bag of them. And uh, sure as sure as crap, I go get my magnet out of the shop and I'm and I and that clings to it. I find that little bitty piece that goes in this gear and makes my jack work again. So anyhow, Tom's a great guy, great guy to, and and an, a very interesting perspective. Uh, you know, a great uh, he, you know, I it's it's funny that where was it uh, San Antonio? They had trouble with the ground. And I think I was told that the the rodeo committee was calling Tom to get his opinion. He's in he's up here at Garden City, Kansas, and they want his opinion on how to fix the ground. That was when they had to shut down the barrel racing performance. So it's pretty it's pretty. Uh, huh? I'll step in there. They they called Emily and she called me, <laughs> and and I watched it on. I had it recorded, so I watched it two previous nights, and we actually figured out what was going on. So it's, it's, uh, you know, this guy, he, he's a farmer and, uh, so he understands moisture in the ground and it has to be a certain level of moisture. And, and, uh, so that's, you know, he's not your typical show up once a year and, and uh, hook the shanks in the ground and, and rip it up. And then it rains that night and then everybody's sad. So <laughs> he, he, he gets it. So anyhow, that's, so uh, that's who we got today, Emily and Tom. Perfect. We've got a few comments um, looking good, Jimmy. Mm, let's see. America is proud of rodeo. What's that? JBH is always looking good. <laughs> and, and, you know, I, I want to have uh, Austin on as well. You know, my brother's like, I'd like to get Austin's perspective. So what, what does he think about all this, Emily? You know, <laughs> he's got to learn to tread pretty light <laughs> um, when he he, uh, he loves that Texas is another rodeos page because, you know, Miles is pretty good about updating it, um, you know, as far as the barrel racing results go. And, and so he'll follow it and see 
um, you know, where I'm at. And he's like, if I don't see your name in the results, I just kind of wait, <laughs> you know, he, he's figured this out, uh, you know, and so he wasn't able to be here last night. Um, you know, and I, and he told me, he said, keep your chin up. You're, you're really close. I mean, it's, mm. you know, to run a 16 there, he's like, it's, it's all but there. I mean, we just kind of had a, you know, we lost our front end a little bit. And so when he stood up and came back, you know, that was just, I mean, it's a game of inches. Um, we needed about two more inches on the backside there, but, um, you know, he, he's really, you know, pretty level-headed about it. And, you know, he understands sports. I mean, he knows I want to win, but he wants me to have fun while I'm doing it too. We had fun last year when I went out to Vegas and, and these guys invited me to, to come out. Tom called me a couple of years ago when, when Emily was really close to making it. And he's like, Hey, you need to keep your calendar clear, you know? And, and that meant a lot to me, you know, to be uh, invited. It's kind of a joke when we was at the college finals. Like, hey, I'm going to have to go be your bumper at the college final or at the, the NFR when you make it, you know. So, you know, when I got out there last year, it was, it was kind of funny when Tom's like, now, you're going to escort my daughter to the perf tonight since Austin ain't here. He had to go back home. And he's like, you got a knife on you? And I said, well, I actually couldn't find it in my bag when I got here. So he hands me a serrated roping knife, you know, and and he says, have your hand on this one. You're walking my daughter to the performance tonight. And the funny part of this whole story is when Austin did get back, I, I was doing some funny little videos on the way to the perf. And, and so as me and Austin and Emily walk along there and, and uh, I'm like, man, the last few nights I was, I was kind of escorting Emily, but now I'm escorting Austin to keep all the women off of him. So. <laughs> no, do you remember the guy, the homeless guy, like called him big sexy? <laughs> as we were walking by he wanted five bucks <laughs> he was like hey there big sexy you got an extra five and so that's always kind of stuck too we have to laugh because <laughs> you know but then the guy got pissed because we wouldn't give him any money I really did think he was going to shank us <laughs> is, that, is that what Tom is that what you call Austin now big sexy <laughs> no <laughs> we call him muzzles yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's that's how you do it. I'll I'll give that some thought. <laughs> well, so, Royce yeah. Johnson, uh, Royce Johnson says, "Glad to see you back at the NFR again, Emily. Hopefully, everything turns around for tonight." Uh, JBH, it's fun getting to hear your stories and thoughts again. Uh, yeah. Smith Mule says, "Got to have fun to make it worth it." Yeah. yeah. So tell me, like I, you know, I asked, we had Ted Harvin on here yesterday and I was kind of asking him the logistics of Texas Live to the arena and the traffic and, and that uh, Ted's wife was talking about how things cost a lot more, you know, the parking and this and that and everything. But I want to know, you know, like I, I've gotten to see the setup of the stalls for the contestants in Vegas. And I know 14 of the 15 barrel racers hauled in and out there last year. Uh, I know a lot more people are hauling in and out because they can actually get to their house or somewhere. But uh, is there contestant stalling right there this year? And how are you? How are you doing your deal? Yeah, <laughs> my deal is a hot mess. Uh, to be <laughs> totally honest, um, I've got two rigs down here, two trucks, two trailers. Um, you know, and you know how my horses buddy up so bad. Um, you know, Bo actually like he's funny he's an absolute saint as long as he's by himself but when he knows he's got his his pals around um he's a little bit of a handful so it's been really important to kind of keep him separated but I am using um, my contestant stall but it's typically only like before the perf that night every now and then like um after after round four I left Bo in the contestant stall overnight because we had practice the next morning um, you know, but I, I've kind of been using that as a, uh, I don't know. Cause like we're on asphalt wherever they park us during the perf at Globe mm -hmm. Life. And so I had to make some adjustments, um, after the first two rounds, you know, I tried to warm Chongo up at Globe Life. Um, you know, they're in that, you know, it's, we've got the asphalt parking lot. There's a little bit of grass, like in a ditch. And so I tried to warm him up there and it just, it wasn't working. And then I tried to warm him up in the arena and, and that's something different um, that, you know, I learned a lot about my horse uh, the first 48 hours of this deal, you know, it, it is very intimidating in there. You know, you come down that tunnel into the arena and you look up and there's like six sections of seating, seating. And clear, clear. I mean, it's straight up and the lights are really bright and it's loud versus Vegas. 
um, we were in a tent or we had the, the arena in the back and it's really quiet. You can't hear anything. You know, you can warm up in a really relaxed atmosphere. And even when you're in the tunnel in Vegas, it's quiet. And Jim Boy knows that because he led me down the alley the seventh round. You know, it's, it's not, you can't really, you could hear the crowd a little bit. Like if somebody made a really good run and they got loud, you could hear just a little bit of the roar, but not much of it. And so Chongo didn't mind, but those first two nights when I brought him down early and he was hearing everything and I was trying to keep him settled and warm, you know, warm, but not, uh, <laughs> it was a mess. <laughs> I, I learned real quick. I was like, we got to figure something else out. So I'm actually um, warming up clear out of the tent, which is about a mile and a half from Globe Life. Mm -hmm. And I'm hauling in. <laughs> Jim Boyle loved this. So we got, we got to the arena at about 8.20 last night. Um, you know, I'd already warmed up, had him saddled, had him booted up and everything. And we pulled in about 8.20 and headed up to the arena at 8.40. Um, so it's it's kind of, it's cutting it a little bit close. I mean, I think there was like three bronc riders left when I pulled in. Um, so hopefully there's not a traffic jam. But, uh, <laughs> you know, but it, it's what I needed to do for my horse. I mean, you guys could see it last night. He was a completely oh, yeah. different animal than he was the first two rounds. And you know, and it's just part of learning, keeping um, him settled and stuff. So it's, it is nice though, to have those stalls um, close. They're not quite as close as they are at Vegas, but um, you know, I'm, I'm figuring out, I need to utilize them. You know, it's made a big difference for him. So we do have a, a question on Facebook. Um, can you really tell all the cameras flying around and are they a distraction? No, we don't see any of that stuff. It's mainly, um, it, you know, like, uh, the second night, I think the tie down roping just got rapid, like the last mm -hmm. four guys. I mean, it was just like yeah. leader change, leader change, leader change. And the crowd was really loud. And, you know, you, whenever we're in Vegas, like we, I mean, we can see it on TV, but we don't hear that. Um, and even uh, the barrel horses running by, you know, as they come out, you know, our horses don't see any of that mm -hmm. in Vegas. And so like my horse is seeing these other horses run out. They actually see him leave and go down the alley. And it's, um, as far as the atmosphere for our horses, it is completely different. And like, I, I feel like Chongo is, is quiet and sane minded as they come and it overwhelmed him. Mm -hmm. I know now, it have... can be interesting. Uh, like you said, and you said this going in, none of us know, no, you, you know, so just like that, you weren't, you know, who thought, who would have thought the warming up process would be different and be, you know, I remember, uh, uh, competing at Lincoln, Nebraska at the Pershing Auditorium. And I don't even know if they still have that rodeo anymore, but uh, there was nowhere to warm up. I mean, it's downtown Lincoln. They block off the street out in front, maybe a side street for us to park on. Um, the the only warm up area really was like a little patch of grass. And yeah, really tree. Not, like 40 by 60 out there in, in front of the building. And I had two navicular, uh, my team of bulldogging horses that year, my hazen horse, my bulldogging horse was both older and navicular. And, and there was snow on the ground outside. And I'm like, oh, this ain't going to be a very good warm-up spot. When we come in the building, when it's time for the bulldog, I mean, it's, there's just barely room to get in and out of there. I mean, everybody's hitting each other. It's kind of like getting in the arena at K-State's rodeo during a slack, you know. Um, and so my warm-up process was to jazz my horse up going to the other end to the bullock to the rodent shoots and so when i get him in the box and normally he was he was pretty good in the box but that night that warm-up process was just way different from what i'd ever done with him and and uh he was he didn't quite know what to think it's different so so i can see where that did affect everything um i did uh you know i did get to see the stage coach last year that i knew that was your concern last year when we was walking down in there he, he's like mm -hmm. okay we're gonna we're gonna try to you know they have the fence and some uh tarp along the fence to where you can't really hear the stagecoach but you can sure hear the bells or the you know the all the harness coming by and and uh so that was the thing last year it was funny emily was a little worried about that but but uh you know that we didn't have no problem with that but yeah it's it's interesting to to you know like that to see all the difference sure. tell, tell me tell me this last night just looking on tv looked like there's a lot more people in the stands yeah. Like when they shown the opening, it looked a lot more. What was that all about? I would say that that we're gaining a few percent every night. Um, I think maybe a little bit of what you're seeing uh, because we had some folks in front of us that uh, they were clear up in the nosebleeds. 
And mm. of course, you know, you, you get up there high enough, long enough, and you look around, it's like, hmm, you know what? There, there's a better view to be had. And they must have watched our show. They must yeah, have they're sneaking down. I was down. talking to you a few days ago yeah. where they're not checking. See, people yeah. should be watching this. They'll learn stuff. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> they, uh, they were panicked when they got there. There was a zip tie on. And uh, so trying to be the nice patron of the rodeo that I am, I reached down there and slid it off and said, now I have a seat. Yeah. And uh, then we try to fix them when we leave. But, uh, I appreciate that. That's, yeah. that's kind of like screwing the uh, the people that undo the screws and the tarp stalls, the box stalls, letting the flap down so your horses can see each other and then putting it back up when you leave. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So, you know, and I, and I appreciate their effort of social distancing, but, uh, you know, we're, that's, I will say this, I've, you know, I've got mixed feelings about being here. Um, obviously from our, you know, from last year, we were a little more successful in Vegas, but um, there, there is just a whole lot of more room here. I mean, the seats, you know, for a big fat guy, I mean, I can stretch out. There's, there's room to, to maneuver, so to speak. Uh, when you're, when the people, somebody has to get up and go, you know, it's not a, a, a contest to see who can stand on their tippy toes and let somebody buy. Uh, it, it's just a, it's more enjoyable from the spectator point of view. And as far as the view, I, I think even though I'm guessing physically we're further away, uh, it's, it's still a good view of the arena. And uh, we're sitting in the third section up, I guess I would call it the, plaza plaza mm -hmm. section and uh, and there's it's from a spectator's point of view this is a pretty good venue i mean i think they you know the whole thing is just uh, the fact we're here still amazes me and um in light of 2020 mm -hmm. and uh so I, I think what we're seeing is i think there's more people coming in I think there's less animosity towards the, the COVID thing and people are getting more comfortable. But uh, I also think what you're seeing somewhat is a migration down just from the upper levels. Um, yeah. You know, I haven't heard any ticket sales numbers, but it looks to me like they're, they're doing all right. I mean, I know on TV, it probably looks like there's not a lot of people there, but when you get up and go walk around, there are plenty of people here. And the parking yeah. lots are packed. I mean, like, trying to navigate my trailer in and out of the contestant parking, especially since I'm coming in so late, you know, cause I come for the grand entry and then as soon as the grand entry is over, I leave and I drive back over to the stalls to warm up and then I drive back in with the trailer. And it's, I mean, it's a good thing I've been driving since I was like 12 because trying to weave through there and get parked is it's tricky. Huh. So have you, um, have you had an opportunity to enter some of the larger uh, indoor rodeos that would be, I mean, maybe similar to this, like maybe Houston or the American? Yeah. I, and are they similar? Um, somewhat. I, you know, the, the barrel pattern, uh, as far as Houston goes, actually, rem this reminds me more of that than I thought it would. Mm -hmm. um, I, in my head, I had a lot different idea in mind about how, um, the, the pattern was going to be set. I, I knew it was going to be a standard, but I thought it was going to be a little bit more like, um, you know, like Burwell or Sydney, Iowa, or like Tucson, where I got to walk out, you mm -hmm. know, a little ways and then start my pattern. Start. Yeah. Versus um, here, it's only 30 feet from the mouth of the alley to the timer. And mm -hmm. then it's a standard. So I actually still cannot see my first barrel until I'm about two panels from the mouth of the alley which has really been a struggle for me. Um, that's part of, you know, everybody always talks about me holding my horses up in the mm -hmm. alley and, you know, and them being so patient for me. But I do that because I have to be able to see my spot. Where you're driving. Yeah, exactly. And a lot, some girls don't. I mean, some girls can roll in from the back and mm -hmm. they handle it just fine. But that's, um, you know, a gift that I don't have. I've got to be able to see where I'm going. And so anyway, so it's, it's reminded me more of Houston than I anticipated. Um, it also reminded me more of Houston, the way Chongo didn't want to turn the first night. You know, he did the exact same thing at Houston. I only ran him once at Houston and he didn't really care for it. And so um, I didn't even bother taking him this year just because I knew he didn't like that setup like that. And so 
uh, as far as that goes, it, it has surprised me a little bit. Uh, you know, I think I was not as prepared as I thought I would be because it was a little bit different, but, um, as far as like the park mm -hmm. and the driving back and forth and stuff, I think the American was definitely really good preparation mm -hmm. uh, for that because everything is pretty spread out here. Uh, you know, Vegas, it's a lot more condensed, you know, yes, it may take you 40 minutes, but you're only driving four miles, mm -hmm. you know, in Vegas, um, you know, the casinos are close and stuff to go do signings and whatnot. Um, but, but here it is a lot more spread out as far as, you know, where our luncheon's at and, and those kind of things. So I have one more question and then I'll pass it back to Jim Boy. Um, I know it's been a long time since I've uh, ran, but I had a really specific routine for warming up. And I thought that I felt like the structure was good for me and for my horse at that point. Are you finding that, I mean, obviously you had to make that adjustment in your in your warm up and how you were doing that, um, are you finding that you're still able to stick to your kind of schedule, or have you tried had to make little adjustments to that also? Yeah, I completely 110% altered it. Um, yeah, you know, and Bo Bo is really quiet. To, uh, you know, that horse is just he handles the rodeo atmosphere great. So after my first two <laughs> nights, um, you know, and I I kind of traumatized Chongo a little bit. I mean, he just <laughs> was not at all loving. Uh, you know, how I was doing things. I thought, all right, I need to take a step back here, uh, try to figure something out, test run it on Bo, see if I can. And I mean, literally like I have it down to the minute, like we're sitting there, we're watching it live. You know, there's three calf ropers left and that's when I head down the tunnel. Um, you know, and it's, I mean, we try to be very, very specific just to keep, you know, Chongo, um, you know, a little bit happier. Um, mm -hmm. and so, yeah, it's, and that's the thing about this. I mean, you know, last year the Vegas setup was really conducive to my horses. Everything worked great. Um, I didn't anticipate that. I really, uh, went out there not expecting a lot. And then this year for this deal, I thought, Oh yeah, standard pattern. That's what I, you know, my horses love. We're going to be awesome. And, you know, we're over five, the first five nights and we've had to make a lot of adjustments, but last night gave me a lot of confidence that, Hey, I, I think we've got a plan in place. It's going to work. And, and there's five more runs to make. So so just to clarify, because I do not know the names of your horses, Chongo is the white, yeah, the white horse that you were running last night. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. And Bo is the, he's the bay. I rode him in rounds three and four. Perfect. Some people okay. think she rode Chongo the first night, but that's actually one of my bucking horses. It wasn't Chongo. <laughs> That's why I had a little trouble. You know, so I can blame yet. you for that. <laughs> Do what? I can blame you for my performance yeah. that night. Come on, Jim. Well, so, you should have tune better. <laughs> so I, I got a funny. It's kind of. <clears throat> so you mentioned at the rodeo, Bo is the more laid back one, and Chongo has. He don't like change or issue. You know. So to me, that's complete opposite of how they are at the stalls. Because Absolutely. last year, when I got to Vegas, and Tom picks me up at the airport, and this was the morning of the fourth round, you you won it that night as your second round win. We go straight to the place where you're keeping the horses, and I walk in the alley, and uh, Cheyenne, I think, was in that barn, too, and, and another horse, a backup horse, and uh, then there's Bo and uh, Chongo and uh, Foxy. And uh, so Foxy is the yellow horse that I helped lead in last year. Yeah. But uh, so I walk in there and the funny thing I, I noticed first is Chongo's kind of acting just lackadaisical, like he don't feel good. And I'm, and I'm like, oh crap, Tom, come here, you know. Yeah. And I've never been around him before. I was the first time I've been around that horse. And Tom's like, no, that's him. That's how he, that's how he acts, that's how he operates. So we take him out and there's a little paddock, a little grassy area, neat little, I mean, nice little place, just kind of hang out and move around and relax. And this dude, you have, Heidi, I swear you, and, and everybody watching, if you've never seen this, it's amazing. That horse will lay down to roll. When he lays down, he just kind of nonchalantly lays down and falls, just kind of eases over to one side and he'll kind of roll. And then he doesn't kick and flip over like most horses. He works his front legs up and he'll just sit up and get in the sitting position. He'll sit on his butt <laughs> with his front leg straight out. And I kid you not, he'll stand there and just kind of look around. Just, and then he'll rotate around to the other side and just gently lay down and roll, just kind of scratching. And that then, is very unique. So I've never in my life seen another horse do it that way, act that way. It's 
And then, so very proper. Tom's in there cleaning his stall, you know, and then I go in there and help him clean a little bit. And then I go to go into Bo's stall to, to get a halter on him. And, and Tom says, be careful. Do not like, don't leave that door open. I can't see what you're oh. showing. What are you showing me? Sideways. That is a picture of him setting in Vegas. Oh, yeah. I don't know if, if it'll pick it up or not. Uh, yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah. my gosh. That is him. Yeah, he, was, he was just hanging out. Yeah, he does that all the time. I think it's <laughs> his back out. Um, so he'll just. Oh, yeah. I think yeah. it feels good to him. It's like a dog. Yeah. That is so funny. Well, then I go in to catch Bo, and Tom's like, be careful. Shut the door. Don't leave it open. Just He will <laughs> run over you and run out and get away. And So, Tom, tell that story. Where were you? <laughs> <laughs> I was, we were in Calgary. And uh, and I I hadn't been around Bo a lot, but I'd been around him some. And uh, she had one other horse there that I know of for sure. And she was going to the wash rack, and I was to leave <laughs> Bo back to the stall. And, you know, most of Emily's horses are pretty much like Chongo. They're pretty well mannered, no problem. And I, I walk in that stall and I, I, I grab the latch for the halter and, and I let go with my right hand. And you know, the second I did it, I was like, oh God. <laughs> and I reached back to grab the bars on the door to slam it shut and there are no bars in the door. And so he whips a 180 heads out of the stall. I still have halter in hand. Um, I, I somehow grabbed a handful of mane with each hand. We're running down the alley of, of the barn. He gets going faster than the fat man can go. I literally <laughs> do a complete somersault, stand back up on my feet. Well, Ryan Jarrett luckily was down at the install and heard what was going on. Sticks his pitchfork out of the uh, the, the door. I think he must have seen it because I heard later the comment was the old man rolled like a sack of shit. <laughs> <laughs> he, he has stuck the uh, pitchfork out the door. The horse stops. By then, I'm there already. Put the halter back on him and we walk back in. And this time, I guarantee you, the door was closed before the latch for the halter come off. But he... He will always be looking for that opportunity, always. And uh, yeah, and I, I had I lost some skin over that deal actually. So, but that's that's why when yeah when you were in there and the door was open, I was in full blown panic mode. <laughs> uh, when you go in Bo's stall, you take your life in your hands. You open that door, you step in, you close that door because he will be exiting. You know what's funny though, like in it's true. I mean, if, if I have all three of my horses together and Bo is around his, his pals, he, he can be a little bit of a handful, but like when he's by himself and he doesn't have his friends to impress, he is a teddy bear. I mean, he is so kind and so sweet. And you know what, what you guys are seeing on TV when he just walks in and just does his thing, like that's Bo. But I, that was a thing that I learned this year about him is that mm -hmm. I literally have to isolate him. You know, he, he's quarantined too, <laughs> like yeah. the rest of us, um, you know, and if, if I can keep him by himself and just focused on the task at hand, like he is honestly probably the easiest rodeo horse I've ever had. And I know that's crazy for you to hear Jim boy. Cause you know, it, he's come a long way since, you know. Every, yeah, I taught him some manners while yeah. we were out there. I, yeah. I, and we, he, we had the visit. We had a few little sessions when Tom wasn't watching. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and like the other night I was trying to put his leg boots on and he kept walking. And I just looked at him and I was like, Bo, you were being rude. Quit. And Jana was like, does that work? And I said, yeah. I said, he totally understands my tone of voice. Like he just kind of looked at me. And he was like, oh, sorry. Didn't mean to. You know, and then he's fine, but like, it's, it's really funny. Like they all have such a unique personality and, and 2020 has been really good on, on Bo and I's relationship, just cause I, I learned so much about him. Um, you know, he's got a lot of really awesome qualities, but he's got some, some things, you know, there's you know, little things we got to navigate to, um, you know, that's why I've got two trucks and trailers down here to keep them separated. So we do have a question 
um, which I believe you already answered this one. Do you start your horse at the alley or as you see it coming um, or as you see it coming in? We already talked about that. And then and he wants to know, uh, besides raising badass daughters and raising horses, what does Tom do for a living? Well, my primary uh, living right now is I'm a farmer. I, uh, I spent 26 years as a farmer and a crop duster. And, uh, and I still do my own crop dusting. Uh, that, that was probably my true life's passion, somewhat like hers, is barrel racing. But sometimes life gets in the way of the best laid plans. So Indeed. Uh, I sold the crop dusting business about uh, five years ago to Nutrien plug for sponsor yes. the nutrient ag and um and flew for him for a couple of years and I, now i just have my own airplane and i just uh i'm just a dirt grain farmer in southwest kansas you uh, can't say just that doesn't work that question comes from uh scuba steve smith uh steve rodeoed at fort scott and then went on to finish at southwestern emily um he was a no phenomenal barrel rider that was in this region um but, uh, you know, he, he doesn't realize that, uh, and, and some people watching this broadcast may not realize that Emily is the first generation rodeo person in this family. Uh, she she um, got the bug from uh, Jana Waycamp, who lived down the road. Jana was Emily's babysitter, and, and uh, Jana is the one that you see leading, helping lead her in there at the NFR. So um, it's, it's an interesting story. Mm -hmm. The, and and you can go back and so I'm sure several people on here watched the the deal on the Cowboy Channel that Emily did at Dodge City when they interviewed her and uh, the just the she didn't have a clue when they started none of them had a clue and uh, and I remember watching them when they first showed up over at the Little Bridges Rodeos at Lakin and and just to see her progress and, and come along but the the work ethic that was there was was phenomenal and mm. uh um, you know, I, and I know there's, uh, just because my close, close relationship with these guys, I know there's some people that didn't believe in them, uh, didn't think she'd ever get over the hump and figure it out. And, uh, but, but she did. I remember one year, uh, it was Easter weekend. I think we'd been at Weatherford's college rodeo or something. We had a, the short go Saturday night and the deal was all of my kids on my rodeo team could come to my mother-in-law's house for, for Easter lunch. And so several of them come over and, and uh, we do lunch and then we go out and fly kites afterwards. Well, Emily left and it was fixing, a storm was, was rolling in here. I mean, it was fixing it cold, start snowing. She left to go home to ride some horses. And, and I've been told um, from another guy here in town, he uh, came by there late one night uh, in the summertime when it was really hot. And uh, Emily was, I mean, maybe she was still in high school at that time. But uh, it's so hot in the daytime, you didn't want to ride your horses much around here. So she's out there in the arena with the pickup lights shining out in the arena, out there riding her horses in the middle of the night, like two or three in the morning when this guy came home from a rodeo and came by their house. So just the, the work ethic, the things that she's um, learned, the things that she's tried through the years, um, she's willing to listen to people. She, she don't know it all. She'll tell you that. She's still learning. And... Uh, so that's what's, uh, and just, just down to earth folks. So that's what's been fun around these guys. Well, thanks, JVH. For the good friend pep talk. Yeah, shut up. Yeah. All, the, all, all yeah. the feel goods. <laughs> so I got, a, I got an important question. Now that, you know, all my questions are important. And this, that's why this show is going to be fun. And we're not like the other talk shows. So in Vegas, what is the, you know, in Vegas, when everybody gets to Vegas, and what was the first thing, most important thing you got to do? I know for me, when I took my family out there, we got to go to In-N-Out Burgers. So has <laughs> Whataburger taken over that status? Um, yeah. You know, we've had, an, I've had enough, and I love Whataburger, but we've had enough prior exposure to Whataburger, because there is one in Oklahoma City, you know, that... Yeah. Uh, that uh, you know that it's it's probably not as huge of a deal. I will say that uh, we've only been once, not twice, yeah, yes. twice. I haven't been at all. Yeah, but so, uh, so yes, yeah, it, it's a deal. You know, Waterburgers, it's they've got it going on, and and uh, probably <laughs> the only thing we haven't really 
done yet that's, mm -hmm. that might have to get done is, is going to Bucky's for yeah, a barbecue I, sandwich. I, I was literally just going to say, I was like, you know, I pretty well tried everything to break this, uh, <laughs> turn things around, whatever you want to say. I mean, I've tried braiding my hair, not braiding my hair. <laughs> like <laughs> Every time I'm like, all right, surely something is going to change. Right, you ready? I, you ready for that? You know, you I know. mentioned on, uh, on Casey Atmire's deal last night, I mentioned watch the show. Maybe I comment on somewhere else, you know, watch the psychological session, you know? Yeah. So, you, you know, you, you, you probably don't really remember my coaching style. It was so phenomenal. You know, you I, I, won coach, I won runner up to everyone else in this region as coach of the year for like 20 years, but you <laughs> know, who, maybe the votes were kind of wrong. I don't know. But all right, you ready? Yeah, you ready? Right. Motivational? Remember, remember that? Remember that, you know? I got one. That's for yep. having top bareback horse in 2017. But do you, yep. do you remember what them look like? You know, remember how yep. cool that is when they hand it to you? Yes. That tonight, yep. okay? I okay. mean, is that enough incentive? It is. I think so. Um, and, yeah. and your pregame ritual. I mean, really, did we forget our pregame ritual? Well, well yeah, we we <laughs> had a slip. <laughs> and I. We we start we're starting to get it back though. Last night we got a taste of it, uh, and so I a think big taste. Yeah, right. And so, uh, yeah, I think tonight's going to be better because I was like, you know, this is funny. I mean, and I guess you all, this is the Hangover podcast for a reason, right? But uh, I went to Gaiman this fall, and I I was riding bow and had a good first and second barrel, and I was running to the third, and I sat just a hair early. And I uh, just barely bumped it. And I was headed to mom and dad's house that night in Southwest Kansas. Cause I was going to go on up to Nebraska the next day and was talking to dad. And he goes, well, did you have a Tawaka bomb? Eh. I was like, no. And he's like, that's your problem. <laughs> and so we get to Hastings that afternoon. Dad hops in with me. He's going to help me drive. We get to Hastings and, uh, Anyway, and we have a Tawaka bomb before the perf, and he, he wins the perf by like half a second that day, ends up third uh, at the rodeo, and he's like, see? And then we go on to Rapid City, and we have two of them. What, and, what is this? What is this that you're talking about? Oh, yes. It'll change your life. <laughs> <laughs> life changing. We need this. Please tell me. This is a secret rodeo drink that originated in Penrose, Colorado at Little Bridges yeah. when they ran out of Jaeger. <laughs> and we started mixing Tawaka in these cool little cups with Red Bull instead of Jaeger we used Tawaka and uh, and so in the years since and, and actually it's been probably what 12 years now we tend to have quite a bit of Tawaka and these cool little cups and, that, and that's her brother is on his way down with the official cups because we've kind of been having to make do up until now. And so we're, we're confident tonight yes. will be the turnaround night because. Yeah. Well, Kelsey Scott, Kelsey Scott posted right before you, like just before you started talking about this, what about a shot of tequila? Yeah. So, right. I think everybody's on the same page. Close. Yeah. yeah. yeah well, and this is to walk a Tom. They, I didn't think a horse after you. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Nah, they were going to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure somebody named a horse to walk a Tom after. It's my happening. Day. It's done. I'll just look through my brands here in a little bit. The ones that aren't named. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we we've, we've been drinking Tawaka shots with Red Bull for many years at the rodeos, and and oddly enough, it seems like if we will take the time to uh, have a Tawaka shot sometime before the perf, things go a little better. So. Yeah. So I'm not gonna lie. I had to Google it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I and everybody when I I say to walk they're like to to what? Who? Like nobody knows. They're like where? I've heard of that? Yeah. It's really smooth though. It really is. And so, um, I I think it actually probably helps my mom more than anyone because she said it like kind of tones her down, but like mm -hmm. she's not asleep. <laughs> you know, because she gets really nervous watching me run. I I don't like I don't get nervous at all. But uh, you know, especially like when I was at Shawnee. When mom, because mom always kind of took me to the IFYR. She, that was kind of her go-to. So it's tonight's the night because we've we've got all the official stuff for it. So so just for everybody that is like me and has never heard of this, uh, I did Google it. I have a picture of it here. 
Uh, sweet golden brown in color. Ingredients include brandy, citrus essence, vanilla, and other secret spices. It is bottled at 70 proof. Yep. yep. So Just there you go. Yep. Um, I'm going to have to find some of that. And, and you got to find the right cups. The cups, the cups yeah. are essential. It's all about the cup, huh? It, it mixes yeah. it together. Like it starts out separate. And yeah, kind of like that cement mixer drink, but don't do that. Ugh. Yeah. You want your That's like 21st birthday stuff. Mm -mm. Yeah, Tawaka warm Red Bull cold. Tawaka goes in a little shot glass inside and then the, the Red Bull on the outside. And it's all one drink. You can't hesitate. No. Irish car bomb style. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, throwing it way back. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, Emily, tell us, you know, uh, we talked about Lazy Johnny a little bit yesterday. Is is Austin? He's he's okay with Lazy Johnny. I mean, yeah. you know, I, I'm I'm sure that Austin's a little bit worried, but but he's handling Lazy Johnny okay. He's not too creeped out by him. No, he he, he Austin. Uh, he he's he's been through worse. So I promise he's the least bit worried about Lazy Johnny. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. LJJ, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, it's, it's so funny between that <clears throat> and. Uh, man we've been giving jason at the stalls heck too and he's always worried he's like was that your husband he's like did you hear what i said and i was like yes it's fine he's like i'm just afraid he's gonna corner me out in the parking lot <laughs> i'm like no that reminds me too when you mentioned the guy at the stalls um tom you remember the elvis impersonator that was running that gate last year right there where the contestants come up before they go into the tent or the, the, the dude with the glasses. The, oh, yeah. Was it Bud? No, uh, that Bud was the other one. I can't remember. He had the white glasses. The Yeah, it looked like, I don't know. Uh, yeah. I, don't, I never got his name, but Bud was the, he was the other one that was always like, Emily, you're, you're like, your turn. You need to go. <laughs> I'm always pushing the limit on arriving on time. Well, uh, <laughs> I, I got to talk about it. It's funny because, um, and Trevor, he didn't. Trevor, he didn't qualify for the finals last year, right? Uh, yes, right. Yeah. So, so last year, uh, what's his last name? Trevor. Uh, the Brazil. world champ. Yeah. Brazil. Yeah. Sorry, I'm getting old. Um, <laughs> yeah. so, so the funniest thing last year, probably not real funny to Trevor, but uh, the dude on that gate that I'm talking about with them glasses, he's cool. He's a good guy. Yeah. But, uh, you know, he's, he's manning one of the entrances that, you know, you got to have a pass. I mean, it's right there because, I mean, it's there's like a little hostility tent and you can go this way and go over to the warm-up tent. If you go left, you're going down the tunnel into the, into the building. So last year, I'm standing there visiting with the guy and I've got my armband on, you know, I'm kind of, <laughs> here comes Trevor Brazil. And he's like, hey, I need to get in there and go catch tough. I need to get something from whatever. And the guy's like, sorry, can't do it, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I remember. Oh, <laughs> Trevor Brazil cannot sneak into the back scenes of the NFR. And that guy was he's like, Man, I'd love nope. to watch you, but I can't. I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember that because it and they are pretty good. I mean, you know, Vegas has such a a routine because they've done it for so long. Um, it has been, you know, a little touch and go here at Globe Life just because, you know, at, and I, I don't think it helps because we have certain wristbands and certain people that have been tested and people that haven't and so like they're <laughs> really strict on who they allow where um just to try to reduce exposure to contestants so even more so this year like um you know I know for the first practice or I wasn't practice it was the first open arena um on Wednesday I think it was Wednesday or no it was Thursday morning before the first round on the third you know, Brittany Barnett went to go down for open arena and they wouldn't let her down because she didn't have her back number. She had her coat on with her back number, but she didn't have her actual back number. And they were like, nope, not, no can do. So they're, they're trying. I mean, it's, and then they, it's all in place for a reason. I mean, I know it frustrates people. And um, we were talking to the guy running the gate at the stalls last night. And, and that's why I asked him, I said, is everybody being nice to you? And he was kind of like, eh. <laughs> you know but some people are really nice and I said, well I said, you know don't let their their frustrations get you down because I said it's just it's tough because like we don't even really know where you know I mean they weren't going to let me in contestant hospitality one night because mine the the sheet that they had printed out um 
didn't ha it had like the top eight barrel racers on it, but like the bottom seven of us got cut off. And so my name wasn't on the list. So even though I had a back number, they were like, you're not on here. And I was like, oh, darn. <laughs> so it's, it's been kind of, you know, but they're doing good. I mean, they're adapting. And I think by round 10, we're going to have it figured out. So. Um, tell me, I, I, there, so I get home last night and Jaden said something about Brian Padone's horse. Like she, she had one get hurt and couldn't make it right. And then she, did she have one in a wreck down there leaving their perf the other night? Well, yeah, it was a pretty bad deal. Um, so she's, yeah, Stinger, which was the good stud that uh, she rode um, that got her to the finals. He fract I think he fractured his hawk at the pink buckle, which is like the first part of October. And so he had to have surgery on it. But, I mean, he's still going to stand as a stud. He got her to the finals. Um, you know, she had a really good attitude about it. She was like, at least it happened a couple months out. So I've got time to plan and everything. Uh, <clears throat> for the grand entry, she had decided to ride uh, a stud that she and her husband own, um, Johnny Reb Jackson. He's beautiful, black, uh, very, very pretty horse. And anyway, he, um, it was her grand entry horse. And I, they think that the commotion of all the horses coming back up, you know, he could hear all the hooves on the asphalt. Um, he was in the trailer. And they think that just kind of got him excited. And um, anyway, and yeah, he, he got in a bad wreck just being in the trailer. Mm. And so is a, you know, and she is such a strong person. I mean, that's what I told her yesterday. Uh, I really admire her because, you know, she's, uh, you know, she's doesn't really care what other people think. Um, you know, she's, she's there to be her own person and, and uh, you know, she's not afraid to be outspoken and stuff, especially, you know, this year, I mean, all the, all the regulations and the hoops we're having to jump through as contestants um, have you know they've not been ideal but it's been necessary for them to have the rodeo for us and in any way and so she you know she's kind of already had a rough go of everything and um and then to have that happen you know the other night was just uh it was heartbreaking but she you know she's handling it and she's doing well it just uh you know she was on dolly joe last night that's what i told her I said, just go have fun i was mm -hmm. like man what a horse to jump on i mean I've always thought Dolly Joe just looked like a, a really fun ride and that mare is so cool and and she's just going to get better and better in here as she gets her timing figured out which and I, I do think even before she ran last night she planned to ride a different horse tonight but um she I expect her to get back on that mare, you know sometime in the next five you know four rounds after tonight and she'll have some fun but yeah it just it's crazy you know and that's that's the thing about all this stuff you know I mean you try to learn and adapt and make the best decisions you can for your horses but you know, it's our, all of our first year here and, you know, trying to figure out what's best for us and for them has been, it's been tricky. And, you know, some horses have handled it, like obviously Haley and sister, I mean, their routine is working, you know, right. And it has been from the very first night, she hasn't really had to tweak much, but um, some of the rest of us are kind of learning, uh, you know, and Bo was the same way. I didn't want to leave Bo on the trailer, um, you know, for three hours from the time we were supposed to park until we were supposed to run just because, you know, he's he's a busy horse even if he's by himself and I thought that that could expose him to you know get in a situation that wouldn't um be conducive so I've you know tried to leave him at the stalls and stuff as long as I can and and just make his life as easy as possible mm -hmm. you know is her horse okay he and they had to, he died oh my goodness it's yeah pretty pretty bad deal so jeez yeah yeah so prayers for her uh, you gotta talk about something happy yeah yeah, yeah. go yeah. ahead emily um man i know y'all put me on the spot there i'm sorry no, uh, no, let's no. talk about something let's talk about something funner yeah <laughs> well i do have some questions tonight go ahead. Go ahead. uh or in the facebook comments um joe foy who is my uncle um just wondered if you now that they have the breakaway roping and it's going on um at the NFR level, are you a roper? I am a retired roper. Uh, <laughs> why retire? Now you have more options. Yeah, I'm pretty sure a uh, guy in 2014, after I missed my calf, um, I pulled my rope off. I mean, maybe I caught, I think I was long though. I was too long to make the finals. Anyway, I'm pretty sure I chucked my rope into the stands for some lucky person to take home. And that was the yeah. last time I ever swung a rope off of a horse. So I don't miss it. Um, you know, I, poor Jim boy, he got to see me struggle with the roping. Um, you know, I had such a cool horse my sophomore year, wasn't it? Uh, or no, it was my freshman year. It was my freshman year of college. I had such a cool horse. His name was Frito. And uh, anyway, and he, 
he made it so easy for me. Um, you know, and I, I mean, I had some success in the rope and I think it's, uh, when was it 2009? I won the, uh, world in little birches rodeo and the, and the breakaway rope and, um, on my old goat tying horse, Rodney, um, you know, and then he, I mean, shoot, I, that, that was to this day amazes me. So we, she had this old, he was a team roping practice horse that we bought for her when she was little and, and he was big and he was a good sized horse, but yeah. she, she would, uh, tie goats off of him. And then we run little bridges trail course on him. And she actually won the world in little bridges trail course mm -hmm. uh, on him. And then she would break way on him. And, and this is a true story. We're going out to Pueblo, Colorado, whatever year that was. Um, I, I want to say it was earlier than 09. I want to say back to about it was six or seven. Maybe it was 07. I can't remember. First year as a senior, I think. Yeah, actually, I think you're right. I think it was 07. So anyway, we're, yeah. we're driving out to Pueblo for Little Bridges finals. And we're talking and we're discussing, okay, you know, we, we didn't, we had a, we had a decent little barrel horse, but we knew we weren't really going to be in contention. Pole bending was her thing. She was a pole bender. Um, and goat tying. She's pretty good at goat tying. And, and we'd been using some uh, 4-H type horses for trail that we'd acquired. And so we weren't really real concerned about it, but we still had a plan. And, and then anyway, when we got to um, uh, breakaway, basically my comment to her was, and I can't say it in this format, was chuck it. <laughs> There was a little more to that. But anyway, that was our plan for breakaway, was chuck it. And uh, so anyway, we get out there and she backs in the box and one, two, three, and we end up with a world championship uh, from chucking it. <laughs> and so, you know, we're like, wow, we never knew that huh. or that at any. I mean, he, man, he was tapping the barrier every time and uh, putting her in, in the right spot and so we go to, I believe it was Monta Vista, Colorado, about a month later, and she backs in the box, and the announcer is, here is your, you know, 2007 Little Bridges World Champion, blah, 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 the whole deal, you know, and she goes in there, and she turns around, and she nods, and the calf leaves, and Rodney's kind of like, <laughs> okay, we, now, the deal is, I got you the World Championship. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> and so we're like, huh? So she chases the calf around, of course, no success. So the next day we're back in the box and here we are, the announcers talking about, here's your night, 2007 world champion, all this stuff. Jinxed you. And gate pops and Rodney's kind of like, nah, not going to happen today either. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and, uh, and that horse literally would not chase a calf after that. Yeah. We... I, I, and we tried. And he, he was just like, look, I did what I needed to do. I got you that saddle. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. And so we, weird. we we hunted breakaway horses forever and ever after yeah. that. And, and, and I, I did. I, I mean, I found one that was, that, that Frito, he was bad to the bone. Yeah, he and, was good. And I roped good on him. I mean, I actually, there was a year that I made the KPRA finals in the breakaway and not the barrel race, um, which to me was, I mean, I breakaway was never my strongest event, but uh, he broke his leg. We had to put, put him to sleep mm -hmm. between my freshman and sophomore year of college. And after that, it just, you know, I jump rode a bunch of horses. Um, we, we tried and it just, it never, honestly, like I never had fun at it. And I think it is awesome. The opportunity that these girls have. I mean, I was talking to Jordan Fabrizio for a minute yesterday and she was pulling in about the time I was fixing it over for grand entry. And, and, you know, I was like, are you excited? And she's like, oh yeah. She's like, this is so cool. Like, we're so thankful to be here. And so for those girls that are so passionate about that, like I, I am just super happy for them. Um, you know, they're, they worked really hard to get to this point and, and to open these doors. And so it's, it's fun to see, but um, yeah, I'm going to let them have that. <laughs> I, <laughs> I am not going to partake, you know, and there's a couple girls like Jimmy Smith ropes really good. Um, she, I mean, she entered the breakaway a bunch this summer when she was running barrels. Uh, you know, she had such a good winner that she really didn't have to haul quite as hard as some of the rest of us did in the barrels this summer. So she was kind of able to, to swing both of those and, and do really well. But uh, you know, it, I don't know. It's, it's just not, not my deal. I'm going to stick to chasing cans. <laughs> they, the, the funny thing I've been thinking all week with Jimmy, me and Jimmy are Facebook friends. Ooh. Yeah. That escalated because, quickly. Because, you know, they've been talking to her about her roping, but they haven't mentioned her goat tying. 
and that's how we became friends because you know i'm the goat guy at the really? bar so and i kid you not this is how serious the goat tires are when they when they qualify for the college finals if they don't have me in their phone already or we're friends on facebook they're getting a hold of me and i and i kid you not i'll take pictures of my goats and send them to them and they want to know how big whatnot and this and that and, mm-hmm. and so that's how me and jimmy got to be friends so she was a pretty good goat tire I didn't, know, I didn't know that. I will have to ask her about that. Yes, season. that's we're Facebook friends because I'm the goat guy. <laughs> yeah, and, you, are, you are the goat master, the goat <laughs> whisperer. I don't know. Remember, Emily was a pretty good goat tire. I remember she was a five nine at K State. K State's small arena, but still, she she drew number. I think 22. it was a five nine and then a five seven in the short round because yeah. I drew that really good goat. What was he number four? Number twenty two, Kissy. <laughs> Yeah, Kissy. Yeah. Oh my gosh, they're named. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, this, yeah. This is a very personal relationship. Yes. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, wait, wait. I've been confused. <laughs> that of, escalated quickly. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to throw that out there. I, I, I something else we gotta discuss. Uh, last night, I don't know if. Uh, <laughs> very many people seen the uh the awards the buckle ceremony but i'm pretty sure there was a time in that deal last night where you weren't going to catch COVID on stage because there's probably enough Pendleton in the <laughs> air or something because you had uh cody davers and jewel hazen join. yes <laughs> and, and uh, what's the kid that won the bulldogging uh that riding jewel's horse uh, uh shoot the kid from south is good i can't say his name yeah Bridger? anyhow he wins around and, and i don't know him real well but he was almost slurring his words a little bit and then you have tj corco they won the bronc riding on on his horse and uh so you had you had him up there and it's funny lady johnny one of the comments that lady johnny had after the rodeo was how many shots of pendleton will tj corco have tonight wrong answers are all that's allowed you know yeah. So, so there are several zeros, there are several One. ones, and somebody put like 95 or 98, and Lazy Johnny said, I said wrong answers only. <laughs> so, right. I'm pretty sure there was, you weren't going to catch COVID on the buckle stage last yeah. night. Mm-hmm. There was no, no. alcohol. That, that's what somebody there. told me. They, they said, you don't need to be quarantining. Like, there, there are other options. Yeah. <laughs> Charity Robbins wants to know, do you have a vet there in Arlington? That's That was me last year. Actually, when, when Tom asked me to come out there last year, I'm like, really, do you, do you really need me? And he goes, I don't really need you, but uh, in case the wheels fall off the trailer, then I'm going to need you. But in all actuality, I think last year, it was funny because me and Tom went and had breakfast the morning of the 10th round, and uh, I was flying out that day, and, and uh, I, I was like, I, I may have to take him to one of them dispensary stores. Yeah. <laughs> So I think Tom last year, I think is a good thing that I was there to kind of yeah. give him, give, give Margaret some relief. Emily, not only Emily, but Margaret as well. I think there's like, Hey, you, y'all want you to go do something for a while and get him out of here. Right. Yeah. Distract him a little bit. <laughs> Jay Smelvin, Matt Reeves. Jay Smelvin. Jay Smel- I can't say, oh, okay. I'm getting old. I can't say names, but anyhow, the vet question, what do you got? I, I don't. Um, the, the thing about it being here in, uh, in Arlington is we're really not that far from the vet. Uh, so if I need to run, you know, run one back, I mean, with two horses, like if I've got a, a day that I need to have one checked out, I can uh, have somebody run a trailer up to Oklahoma City or Edmond or whatever. And, and you know, Oak or Gquine is closest to me at home, um, you know, so they can, uh, you know, they know my horse is probably the best of anybody. But, you know, like, there are several vets here on site, you know, OE worked on Chongo last year, uh, during the finals. And I mean, they're the main vet they're here at the tents, they're at the arena, like whatever we need. So there's uh, plenty of options. Uh, you know, my horses are really sound. I haven't had soundness issues with them this year. Uh, you know, Chongo pretty well got to take it easy. Uh, the first, or well, pretty much all season, Bo pulled all the weight and, and Bo's, I mean, that horse is just tough. He, he, he really, he's, uh, you know, not a lot affects him. So no, I fortunately I haven't had any need for any vet stuff. Um, I did have several people ask last night that, you know, what was the difference in Chongo? Like, what did you have done to him? Why did he turn barrels? 
uh, that was literally all mental from the warm up. Like, and I, I know that yeah. sounds ridiculous and crazy, but that horse was so scared when he ran the first two nights because he, you know, was in that arena and took it in and just looked up. <laughs> You know, that was the thing. He looked up and he saw the lights and he was like, wait, there's barrels out here? <laughs> it never even crossed his mind. The only reason he turned anything is because I was pulling on him. Um, you know, so we, we had to change our game plan. And it's amazing just, you know, little differences like that, how much it plays a factor in the outcome of your run. So, yeah. Well, I'll say this, you know, and, and you know, I didn't grow up a horse guy, but I still believe you can talk to them through their look, through their eyes. And, and I seen it in Chongo three days ago. Dad, take me home. Yeah. yeah he, he was <laughs> he not was, loving man, that. He arena. was scared. Yeah. Mm. And, uh, but I think, I think, you know, things he's starting to figure out, well, he's got a job. So well, and, maybe and, better hang around. Yeah. And I took him in for two practices, you know, after I, I made my first two runs. Um, I was like, all right, we've got to make this a good experience for him. So I took him into practice and kept it really positive and then after barrel racing practice they have open ride which like Matt Reeves he was at open ride and stuff and Jacob Edler and whatnot so we were talking and and you know just let him relax let him go in the arena without the crowd without the lights um you know all the noise and all that stuff and just let him be like all right this this is just a dirt patch this is my sandbox for the week and I need to get over this you know and so he got two practices in one on Saturday and then one yesterday morning um that were both you know I guess, uh, hopefully confidence building for him. Well, and almost just the opportunity to go in and sit and bring your leg up over the saddle horn and just like BS with somebody and give the horses an opportunity to just chill out. I'm sure that's so helpful. Well, and they like those horses, they love to roll in the sand and stuff. And like, um, you know, luckily I've got those lightweight saddles. So like I could pull my saddle and pack it all the way up the tunnel out to the parking lot, you know, and, and let them roll and relax in there. And just, mm -hmm. uh, I'm, you know, I'm a big believer in trying to make them uh, understand that, you know, that's not a bad place to be. And I, I think that's part of why I can keep them calm in the alley too, is just the yeah. little stuff like that, you know, spending yeah. a little extra time, um, you know, for them, you know, this, this needs to be something that they enjoy too. So, you know, I, I think we made a lot of progress with that uh, yesterday. Definitely. A lot. Yeah. Well, you've got to be excited for, for round six now. Yeah. Top of the ground tonight. So we're, we're super excited for that. And, uh, you know, I, I feel confident that I've got, you know, I mean, I hate that it took me the first half of the NFR to try to perfect this, um, you know, to accommodate him and his needs, but, you know, I think we're rocking and rolling now and there's still a lot of rodeo left. Yes, there is. There is. Jim boy, did you want to run through the events or do you want to, what do you want to do now? Oh, I don't care. I just, I want to give Emily this little, it's not that hard, Emily. Yeah. <laughs> go around this one, go around that one, that yeah. one. And, and the way you see them when you come in, that's how you need to leave them, okay? okay. I mean, right. It's not just that freaking hard to set up and ride. I mean, geez. Right. One to the right and two to the left. Yeah, what? Well, I don't, shit, I don't care. What you, you can go third one first. They're maybe not paying attention. Maybe them judges, you know, they Don't do that. Nods. It might be the yeah. same guy flagging that was watching the nod for the bull ride the other night. I, I, maybe, maybe just go around the first one, the second one, and then leave. Go back out, and they might not catch you. You didn't go around the third. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. See if anybody notices. <laughs> yeah. Good Sarah pep talk. Hey, coming. Hey, I got it on camera. You didn't. You didn't. She didn't. Uh, uh, I got it on camera. But the judges always say, "I ain't watching no video." Nope. Hmm? Ain't doing it. Yeah. Nope. Not gonna do it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you guys are yeah. funny. Um, so Dela uh, brought up the Cowboy Channel and RFD TV did a story right before the rodeo last night on the guy that's pushing all of the steers and the calves. Um, oh, go ahead. Andy Hill Hillman, is that well, right? It's Hambone's brother. They said. Andy, yeah. I don't really it, know him, but. it was actually a really funny story, but um, I, it was I will a good say story this. Too. Um, and Brock, uh, he mentioned to me yesterday, and he said there was some controversy out there in Facebook land or whatever about the dude running the neck rope and getting the heads on the calves. Uh, they said some, somebody said something about he's holding the barrier a certain way, the neck rope, whatever. Oh. And I watched it last night, and they showed it back a couple times, kind of slow. Well, um, in my opinion, you know, I don't think he's doing anything wrong, but – I mean, he's like all but in that shoot with them calves. And, and, you know, I've run that neck rope a million times. 
You ain't got to be in there like that. It's it just because it's the NFR. Them calves ain't any different. The same kind of calves they've always mm-hmm. been. I mean, just kind of have the neck rope. Make sure they're not turning. And they're like them steers, I've seen. I remember at the NFR a few years ago. Like there'd be the guy that have both horns. He'd like he'd be in there on top of them team roping steers or bullock and shot. You ain't got to do that. I mean, all you got to do is is like that's the horn. Just kind of have your hand there close. If they turn it, then just kind of you know. But I mean, yeah, I you can't hold them there. Yeah, it's I don't know. It, it, sometimes I think they're trying to do too much and just back off. Keep it simple. I mean, I don't know. But but no, that is a, a thankless job. The the pusher they they do them all. And I think a few years ago I seen a guy that was wearing a pair of coveralls that you know because you're probably going to be kind of messy when you're done. So yeah, I so he has a college final one year, and I got on Slack and my pants were pretty much ruined, and I'm like, hey. Anybody going to give me a new pair of pants? I didn't get the pants out of the deal. Darn. I'm sure that Cinch would hook you up. The Cinch has been great. And that's, uh, Emily, you want to plug your sponsors while we're here? Yes. I am sponsored by Cinch. Um, they're awesome. They've been, yeah, I've been working with them for a couple of years. And they actually outfitted all of our groomsmen for our wedding um, a couple months ago. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah, that was that was pretty neat. Um, guys all looked really good. So, I mean, unfortunately, they don't make wedding dresses, but um, as much trouble as I had with mine, I kind of wish they did. <laughs> I think I, anyway, that's a story for another day. <laughs> Thank goodness one of my bridesmaids knows how to sew. Let's put it that way. Other than that, that was pretty much I should have been there. I, I know. Yeah. Gym boy, like the vet, you know, the sanity per, I mean, you, you, you do it all. Yeah. So, oh, I, I had to stay home to Little Bridges Rodeo, and I asked Tom permission to stay. I wanted to go to the <laughs> wedding, but we had a Little Bridges Rodeo, and Tom says, I know where you need to be, so. I yeah, so no, I, I totally understand, but, um, you know, Dad, uh, he talked about Nutrien earlier with his uh, spray company, and then also American Ag Credit. They've been with me for several years, and, uh, you know, really thankful for them. Um, if you need a farm loan or anything like that. Master saddles. Uh, I use the lightweight saddles. Uh, like I said, I can pack them, clear up the tunnel and out to the parking lot and not be too winded by the time I get there. Um, 12 gauge ranch. I've got my 12 gauge shirt on. Um, that's a newer sponsorship I pick, picked up this summer. I'm really thankful for Dustin and Cody and all of them behind that. And so there, another podcast too to listen to is the gauge. Um, Haley and Ivy and I did a really fun one uh, about a month ago. We had a, we had a really good time with it. So that, that's pretty entertaining. And they're interviewing the round winners every night um afterwards um rpx enterprises um you know (laughs) that's trying to stay healthy through all of this um you know that's a it's a a company under zingular that uh you know i've been with robin for a long time as well um and i am a lot healthier this year than i was around five last year around six uh this is about the time last year i got really really wore down and started getting pretty pretty crummy feeling so i know i mean as much as i know that's crazy all that stuff really is making a difference and keeping me doing well um vitalize uh that's to keep my horses uh, guts feeling good um i did a live video for them a couple of days ago but they've got an instagram and everything and i think this is probably my third or fourth year with them um as well and then ortho equine that's uh you know who provides the splint boots for my horses keeps them safe um you know we uh, preventing any you know like we had a little bit of a slip last night but uh, it's nice to know my horses are protected either way uh signature quarters that's who did the living quarters in my horse trailer. Um, you know, I've been spending a lot of time in there. I mean, we got a hotel this, this week, but it's still nice to have that. Uh, Schneider performance pads. Uh, those are uh, all the cool colored saddle pads that I have every night that are, you know, pretty di- different colors and unique. And I can match all the themes. Uh, Darla, she's awesome. Uh, very genuine, kind lady. And so go check them out as well. And then uh, finally, uh, Purina Performance Horse. Uh, my horses uh, eat the Ultium Gastric Care. Um, that was a game changer for them, trying to keep them happy and whatnot on the road. So anyway, that's all my sponsor plugs. Um, and then hashtag mom and dad, uh, really thankful mm. for them, <laughs> uh, you know, to be here helping me out and, and you know, keeping everything in line. I mean, it, it does, it takes a village and uh, I'm, I've pretty blessed with the uh, what I feel like is the best village going so very cool well I wanted to add one thing I appreciate you naming off all your sponsors I think it's really important um and I'm glad that we can give you a small platform to do that uh before we move on from the guy that was pushing the calves he did wear coveralls 
And I don't know if you watched, oh no, you didn't watch the beginning last night, did you? He had a piece of tape on his coveralls that said two-time FNG, which I thought was real funny. Because if you have ever been the new guy, you probably have been labeled the FNG at some point. Right. So he's hanging on to that one, which I That's thought was, was pretty interesting. Surprised uh -huh. they didn't take it off. But <laughs> at the same time, I thought it was perfect. The wrong person probably didn't see that. So. Right. <laughs> yeah. He got away with it. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, so no, um, the only thing I want to touch on, I mean, clearly we could go through all the events again, but then we would have to have another hour to do so. So I don't think we have time, but um, the, the TV pin proved to be a very good show last night. Although I was waiting for all the 90 point rides and they just didn't mark them as high as what we talked about yesterday. Yeah, it was, it was good watching. I was, and Boudreaux Camel got a show steer road, I think. I think they went and found a show yeah. steer road. Yeah, who said that? Somebody said something about that. I can't remember where. Tony. About Tony sp were. spurring the heck out of the show steer. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Well, I, I was going to say, was Jewel petting his show steer afterwards? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was, that was so his funny. Steer, petting his steer. I was like, isn't this a timed event? Like, what's going on? That it's was, a little uh, love tap. Yeah. I, I I was gonna comment on that. I was talking to my brother about that before I got here to the office. And so Jewel, I, I knew he got a flag. I thought he, he should have he should have got a flag when he was that one, but he didn't know, you know, you don't know for sure. And and that's something as a bulldog, you make dang sure you have a flag unless you sure enough know. But yeah, you, you know, there's times you better make sure you got the flag and, and he got him. I'm sure it's so loud, I'm sure everybody's cheering and uh, so when the flagger told him to, to let go, you know, and it's probably a good <laughs> thing they did give him the flag and let him because that steer was fixing to land in at and Stadium, I think. If he had, I think he was, you know, after the night before and then that how that run was going, it was probably a good thing they called Jewel off of that because, you know, he I guarantee that steer was probably fixing to land in at and Stadium across the road or whatever. Yeah, so. Uh, I would love to have an audio of that conversation just yeah. from the looks on their faces. I, you know, and I know it can never, he just kind of looked up and well, there was some, there was some uh, conversation back and forth and I just would really like to know, you know, are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I don't blame him. I'm fixing to do this again. I'm not letting go yet. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'd, I'd love to know what that conversation was. And, and, uh, so apparently they finally come to an agreement. Yeah. And of course, you know, last night was tough enough to wear pink night. Um, my family and I went through, uh, my mother was diagnosed with breast cancer last year. So it always will ring true that, um, you know, it's just a, an important cause to, to support. So Steve Bernie brought up the fact that the gate man wearing those pink leather gloves, Ooh. that was on point for sure. I mean, he pulled it off, so but it's all maybe maybe it's, emily should ask him where he got him you can get a pair of them for austin for christmas yeah i'm sure he would love to wear them <laughs> they were fancy they were real fancy um it's always good to see uh the contestants kind of jump on board with the theme of the night so it's always i i appreciate seeing that um what else you got jimmy I, I don't know. I, I just appreciate you guys coming on and, and taking the time to do this. I know you've got plenty to do. I, I think you're, I assume your schedule from what you guys have told me is a little bit more open than, than last year, but, uh, yeah. but I appreciate you getting up and coming on here. I appreciate you, Tom, because, you know, people don't get a, to see your side of the story sometimes. And then, and, and for those out there, uh, you would, uh, it, Tom's a genuine guy that you can just stand around and visit with. He, he's, um, this, you know, lots of good stories there. And, and uh, my brother, uh, you haven't actually met my brother yet. Uh, no, y'all met. Uh, the yeah. Um, but yeah, Tom hooked my brother up with some, got him some, some tickets found and some brothers taking his family down there. I think they'll be going down there Friday and I think we're going to have supper together. Make sure he buys Tom, make sure <laughs> buys your supper for me. I mean, I, I owe you enough that but I do have a pretty good bottle of bourbon on its way as soon as Kyle gets down there. So make sure you get the good stuff, not the cheap stuff that you hate. So <laughs> <laughs> we should have it here directly. He said, well, thank you. I 
I yes. appreciate that. And thank, yeah, I appreciate it too. We gotta, gotta yeah. keep everybody. Yeah. Now there's, there's a bottle to there's a bottle to walk on the way for the whole family, and then there's another special bottle for you. It's not the other stuff you told me you like. Okay. They didn't have that, but I I I sent something that I kind of like, and it's kind of spendy. So it's <laughs> coming from me, Tom. It. Okay. <laughs> That makes well, them more special. So yeah. <laughs> it's my appreciation for Tom and Kyle hauling water to my bucking horses all winter long. That's <laughs> they keep my bucking horses out there at their place in the winter time, and so Tom's always hauling water and busting ice for me. So uh, nice. lots of appreciation. And Emily used to get my horses, and I keep steers out there in the winter time, and gave her something to do: go kick my steers <laughs> back in, get them off the road. So yep. <laughs> well, I certainly appreciate you guys coming on. It was very nice to meet you. Um, it's often, oftentimes when you're not competing anymore, it's really easy to put those that are qualifying at this level and competing at this level on a pedestal. So it's also very nice to have normal conversations and, you know, everybody is just human and they're all just trying to reach some, some passion and a uh, goal of their own. So it's always nice to get to know people a little bit more outside the arena. Absolutely. Well, thanks for having yeah, us. Yes. Yeah, so you have, you have new fans in Wyoming now. And you, you'll always be known as our first contestant on the NFR Hangover, the first morning show. First morning show. Yes. There you go. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, well, we well, thank you guys so much. Jim Boy, you got anything else you want to add? Uh, Tom, what are you going to say? I've watched every one of them. I think you guys are doing great. Love the format. Uh, you know, it's just kind of like sitting around the, the bar having a drink and talking with your buddies. And, uh, <laughs> You know, I, I, and I find the rodeo analysis quite entertaining and, and uh, true to form. So you guys keep it up. We appreciate it. Thanks. I don't always watch you live. <laughs> no, I, I understand. <laughs> but I'm used to watch the recorded version later, but, but I still, I've made it through every one so far. So uh, oh, right. I just appreciate what y'all are up to. I think it's pretty neat. Well, it gives us a good platform to BS anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you guys again. Thanks, Jim Boy. We'll catch you tomorrow. And uh, Emily, go get them. Yeah. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Have yep. fun. I will. <laughs> uh, for those of you guys that are watching us on Facebook, thank you so much for tuning in. And um, listen, tomorrow morning, we're going to have another, another round of NFR Hangover coming at you. Um, I want to give a shout out to our sponsors, uh, Garden City Community College, uh, Double Rafter Livestock, and um, this platform. Clearly, uh, we're using our tools wisely. And then also want to give a shout out to Cinch Jeans for continuing to uh, sponsor this platform and help us bring new and different things your way. So y'all have a great day and we will catch you tomorrow morning.